What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and in this video we're going to do another example dealing with transformations of functions. Notice I got two problems here, very popular type of problems that you're probably going to see come up in your course. And when you read the problems initially, they're actually very similar, but when you dig into the details, they actually have pretty large differences between them. So Let's read both of them. So notice here we're, we're told if the point three and four is on f of x, the parent function, find the corresponding point on this transform function, y equals negative five f of negative three x plus six minus one. And then in number two, we're told if the point four and eight is on the function y equals negative one over three f of x plus eight over two minus three, find the original point on f of x. So hopefully you could tell what the differences are. Basically, here we're given a point on f of x and then we're asked to find the corresponding point on the transform function. You know what, I won't put a y here. Let's just put a f of k bracket x minus d plus c. We're asked to find the corresponding point on this transform function. Right, so we're given a point three and four over here, and we're asked to find the corresponding point over here after it's been transformed. Now remember, f of x, when we've been doing the graphing examples, usually it's been given as a function like uh, x squared or square root of x, absolute value x. I mentioned that this f of x can be essentially anything. Usually it's gonna be one of those fundamental parent functions, but this function can really be anything. You could apply transformations to any function. And uh, sometimes it's not even a function that's given it, it'll just be a single point that's given, like over here. Okay, so we got to take this point and we got to transform it. Now over here in number two, the point four and eight is on the transform function and we got to find the original point on f of x. So over here, let's split these up. In general, we take a parent function, transform it like that. Well, in this case, the point four and eight is given here and we gotta go backwards and find what that X and Y is right there. Now notice we're using X and Y here and X and Y here. So I actually kind of want to change up the, um, the notation, just so you don't get confused here. So, and it's gonna help with the formulas we're gonna use, those mapping formulas. So notice that X and Y, let's say it's on the parent function. And then when we transform this point, let's say it becomes X1, Y1, right? Let's just use that as notation. So X1, Y1 represents the transformed point. And remember, what's the formula to get that transformed X value? Well, we take the original x value divided by k and then add d. And then how do we get that transform y value? Well, we take the original y value, multiply it by a, and then add c. Right, so this here is the general sort of uh, format I'm gonna be using and I'm gonna be using these formulas. The reason why, usually I was just giving you these formulas in these brackets, but because we have to go backwards here, I kind of want to differentiate between these x and y values and these x and y values. Make them different notation and relate them like this. Because this 4 and 8, we're not going to be plugging into this x and this y because they're going to be these points. So we're going to be plugging them in here. And just having an equation like this and then solving, it's going to make things a lot smoother. Right? So this is what I'm going to be using. And so the first thing we got to do for um, <clears throat> this first scenario is we got to get the transformation values. We got to get the A, K, D, and C so we can use that mapping formula. So in this case, notice that we got to actually factor out a negative three here, get that K value by itself, and we'd be left with X minus two inside the bracket. And then we have the minus one outside. And so what is the A value? What's the K value? What's the D value? What's the C value in this case here? So the A value is negative five. The K value 
is negative 3. The D value is positive 2. So if you didn't factor out that K value, you would have maybe put a D value of negative 6, but that would have been wrong. You got to factor out the K value. This becomes negative 2, so the D value is the opposite sign, positive 2. C value is negative 1. All right, so bringing back those formulas, the transform X value is going to be the original X value divided by K plus D. Transform Y value is going to be the original Y value multiplied by A, and then we're adding C. Okay, so we're taking the X value on F of X, 3, dividing it by the K value, which is negative 3, and then adding the D value, and then we can split these up. So the the y value, the transform y value is going to be the original y value, which is 4, multiplied by the a value, negative 5. And then we're going to add the c value, minus 1. So here we're going to get 3 divided by negative 3, which is negative 1, plus 2, gives us positive 1. And then over here, we'd end up with negative 21. So the corresponding point on this function is 1 and negative 21. So this scenario, this example, is more in line with what we've been doing in the graphing examples. All we did was we took this 3 and 4, which you could pretend is like on that parent table that we had in those graphing examples. Then we took that point and we just transformed it with this mapping formula and these transformation values. right? And we ended up getting this corresponding transform point, 1 and negative 21. Okay, versus here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going backwards. So instead of plugging in for the x and y, we're going to be plugging in for the x1, y1, and then solving for this x and y. Because remember, x1, y1 is the transform point, and this is the transform point because it's on the transform function, and we're finding the original points, the x and y, on that parent function f of x. Right, so I'm actually going to erase this scenario, give myself some room for this one, because we actually have to do a little bit of work initially in getting the transform, uh, the transformation values, because notice what we're given, it's a little bit ugly, it's a little bit complex, so we got to do some initial work here. Now I mentioned this, if you're given a fraction like this inside the bracket, what you want to do is you want to split up this fraction. So we would have x over 2 plus 8 over 2 minus 3. And this simplifies to f of, instead of x over 2, I'm going to put 1 over 2x. Those are the same thing. And then 8 over 2 is what? It's just 4. Okay, so I took this, simplified it to that. This and that are the exact same thing inside the brackets. Now, Remember the K value, what we got to do, we got to factor out that K value. It's got to be by itself. The X has to be by itself. What's 4 divided by 1 over 2? It's 8. So it ends up being like this. And then we have um, a minus 3 at the end. Actually, what I just realized too was we could have went from here to here initially. right? We have X plus 8 over 2. We could have just factored out this 2, so it would have been 1 over 2 x plus 8. So that was my bad. I kind of did an extra step here, but I feel like it doesn't hurt. Um, yeah, like in general, if you have a plus b over c, you can rewrite that as 1 over c bracket a plus b. So it could have applied that and got to here quicker. But either way, this here is going to turn into that. And I feel like maybe this part was good practice because sometimes maybe you'll be given something in this kind of format. You'd have x over 2 plus 4, and then you have to get into that format. So it could have been given like this as well. All right, so from here we could tell what's the a value? Negative 1 over 3. What's the k value? 1 over 2. What's the d value? Negative 8, the opposite sign. And then the c value is negative 3, like that. And so now what we're going to do is let's write out those general formulas. So the transformed x value is the original x value divided by k plus d. And then the transformed y value is the original y value multiplied by a plus c. 
And so what we're gonna do, this four and eight is on this transform function. So it's the x1, y1. So this is gonna be four. This x we're solving for, we're do, uh, dividing by the k value. The k value is one over two here. And then we're adding the d value, which is minus eight, like that. So we have an equation, we're gonna solve for x. And the other one, we got y1. Where's y1? y1 is eight. A value is negative one over three. We're solving for this original Y value and then we're subtracting three like that. Right, so now we just gotta solve for this X, solve for that Y and that's gonna be the original point on F of X. So bring this over, we'll have 12 equals X over one over two. We could cross multiply here, X times one is X, 12 times one over two is six. This x over one over two, we could have also rewrote this as two x. Both are the same, bring the negative eight over, divide both sides by two, we end up with six. So either way works. Let's just keep it as x over one over two here. And then over here, uh, just wanna make sure everything's good. So negative three bring over becomes 11, negative one over three y, divide both sides by negative one over three we end up getting y equaling negative 33, right? And negative one over three times y, that's the, or no, yeah, no, that's, uh, sorry, we're good. I got a little bit confused. Um, yeah, dividing by negative one over three, 11 divided by negative one over three is negative 33. And so the original point is six and negative 33. And if you want, you can actually check this answer. As a final check, what you can do is you could take this point on f of x and run it through these transformations, through these transformation values, and you should get the point for an eight. So what we would do is this x value of six, we would divide by the k value, which is one over two, and then we're adding the d value, which is minus eight, and then the y value of negative 33, we're multiplying by the a value, which is negative one over three, and then we're adding the c value, subtracting three, like that. And so what's gonna happen here is we'll have 12 minus eight, which gives us four, and then over here, we'll have 11 minus three, which indeed gives us eight. And so we would end up with that four and eight transform point. So that's a quick way to check. So this kind of question is tougher, in my opinion, than that first scenario, because the algebra is a little tougher. You gotta kind of go backwards versus with that first scenario, you're just applying that formula and you only have to work with one side of the equation. And so be on the lookout for the differences, because sometimes students might get a question like this and they may think that this four and eight is on f of x, but if you read the question carefully, it's actually on the transformed function, which is very possible, it can happen. So make sure that when you get this kind of transformation points example, you know, you read carefully and see, is that point on f of x? And then we have to find it on the transform function or is it on the transform function and we have to find it on f of x?